Welcome to Live Like an Acrobat. I'm your host, Shanae Stiletto, two-time world acrobatic gymnastics champion, USA Gymnastics Hall of Fame member, and Cirque artist. I am also an advocate for RAIN. On each episode of the Live Like an Acrobat podcast, I discuss acro handstanding in terms of training tips, coaching, and I explore circus and acrobatic gymnastics competitive life as I have lived it from past to current, and I theorize on what the future may bring in these fields. On each episode of the Live Like an Acrobat podcast, I will bring you insight through my own experiences, which are rooted in a perspective built on social justice advocacy and how these important issues continue to intersect between the circus arts and acrobatics competitive world at large. On each episode, I have the pleasure of discussing these various narratives with a variety of fascinating special guests. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of the Live Like an Acrobat podcast. Please make sure to check out the circuspreneurblog.com for extended conversations and interactive content of each episode of the Live Like an Acrobat podcast. Check out circo.co, a new circus school online international platform where you can learn hand balancing with me and learn so many other circus disciplines from trained circ performers from all over the world. For this Mother's Day special episode of the Live Like an Acrobat podcast, I have the absolute honor of interviewing Mary Sanders, legendary U.S. Rhythmic Gymnastics Olympian and star and executive producer of the upcoming movie Future Olympians, which features Olympic gymnastics legends Nastia Lukin and Chelsea Mimmel. Mary Sanders has dual citizenship of the U.S. and Canada. Mary became a 2004 Olympian in rhythmic gymnastics, a Pan American and Four Continents champion, two-time Athlete of the Year, USA Gymnastics Hall of Fame inductee, and earned the title as the most successful rhythmic gymnast in all of the Western Hemisphere during her era. Cirque du Soleil scouted Mary to perform in two of their touring shows entitled Corteo and Delirium. Mary continued her career in Cirque du Soleil as an acrobat, contortionist, trampolinist, rhythmic gymnast, aerialist, artistic coordinator, choreographer, coach, and creative collaborator in corporate sponsorship. Mary was hired as the co-creative director, choreographer, and performer for the 2012 and 2016 Kellogg's Tour of Gymnastics Champions, starring Simone Biles, Allie Raisman, Jordan Weber, and other members of the U.S. Women's Olympic gold medal winning team. Both tours were the most successful post-Olympic tours in USA Gymnastics history. Mary has also worked alongside Herjavec Group's founder and CEO, Robert Herjavec. Mary runs their entertainment and global partnerships division within Herjavec Entertainment and directly supports the CEO in all functions and helps drive strategic initiatives of the executive team. Mary continues to stay involved with gymnastics by mentoring young athletes on their road to success and continues to work in front and behind the scenes in large productions on stage and in film. Mary's latest work has her starring and executive producing Future Olympians movie alongside Brainpower Studios set to premiere in advance of the 2021 Summer Olympics. Please welcome my oh so special and incredible guest, Mary Sanders, to the show. My love for Mary Sanders really knows no bounds. She was really so instrumental in my career in transitioning um, out of the competitive acrobatic gymnastics environment into our circus careers. And it was kind of like when people go from high school to college and um, Not many people can say that their experience was on one of the most successful Olympic tours (laughs) to be able to do that and to be able to be with someone as beautiful and as gifted and as sweet and as 
doesn't take anything from anybody, Mary Sanders. <laughs> she really is something and was quite something even as a kid, even as a young performer. Um, and she continued to be a really inspiring uh, person, individual. Now you see mother, wife, um, entrepreneur, so multifaceted, um, but always incredibly grounded. And I'm just so grateful to reflect with her on that time in my life, doing two Olympic tours with Mary, and also to just lifting her up and reminiscing about how amazing her career was because Mary Sanders was such a trailblazer in rhythmic gymnastics for American rhythmic gymnastics. Really, she was. And as you hear in the episode, she says the same for me. And that was really, that was so important. It was such, it was so strange that both of us were making the biggest impact in our sports and our disciplines than any other American had ever made um, at that time. So it's no surprise that we ended up doing so many amazing things together in our careers, at the end of our careers actually, and then being honored for our careers in very similar ways and having very similar trajectories and going to Cirque du Soleil and performing in Cirque du Soleil and then being freelancers. Mary, you know, has done so much in her career. And um, this was a very kind of like nice, short and sweet, condensed version of her life and of her career and of our experiences. And uh, it was, you know, such a um, such a nice trip down memory lane. Uh, but there is even so much more to say. I mean, we could have really, I think, spoken for just like hours and hours of our experiences together and the things we did and the things that we learned and the people along the way um, and how and how our experiences shaped us in so many ways. But you will get to hear what it sounds like to listen to someone of Mary Sanders caliber. And for me, it's so important uh, in the history of USC gymnastics, in the history of unique disciplines like rhythmic gymnastics and like acrobatic gymnastics, my favorite disciplines um, and disciplines that I didn't get a chance to see growing up. So I was so heavily influenced by artistic gymnastics and I hold that sport incredibly dear too because they were really the ones that inspired me to do what I did. And I could have easily been an artistic gymnast. I could have maybe easily ended up as a rhythmic gymnast. Um, and in any of those sports, I would have really been just as much in love. But um, but it is still, I am so, I think it's so interesting that Mary and I are both from very niche environments within um, gymnastics which is even more special because it is different um, being in our disciplines. It's less different, I think, for Mary, especially because rhythmic gymnastics became an Olympic sport. As you'll hear, I you know, am a part of acrobatic gymnastics and we have yet to become an Olympic sport. So you know, even our representation was very different and being the first acrobats to be allowed on an Olympic tour to honor our achievements, like, you know, they like to say honorary Olympians in that way. Um, but, you know, it was it was so profound for us to be able to do that, just like it was so profound for all the accomplishments that Mary Sanders made with rhythmic gymnastics because, as we know, our sports are dominated by Eastern Europeans. And so for us to do well um, is incredibly difficult. It's very political um, as well, and it's not easy to do. And us going out there with our confidence as little acrobats or very, you know, not, not as little, not so little like me, um, but it's with respect to the disciplines because that's, 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 that's the nature of the physique for each one of our disciplines in that way. And it's, you know, perfect. We were both perfectly suited to what we did. And so it's incredibly important to recognize how hard it was for Mary Sanders to be the American rhythmic, rhythmic gymnast competitor that she was at that time and how that set the stage for so much that you see. And also too, just her, her career as a rhythmic gymnast in Cirque du Soleil and evolving 
uh, into her own um, performance artist as an individual artist. Um, that was also very important and not easy to do. Um, she stayed with the productions and became her own her own entity. And as you'll hear in this episode, she's gone far and beyond. And um, you'll be very fortunate to listen in on the knowledge and the experience of someone like Mary who has taken her career into so many different avenues of experience um, into entertainment and working with such you know, amazing international players that she does and like she has. Uh, I hope that you will love this episode with Mary Sanders, um, my my mommy. <laughs> she was the original mommy. She's such a natural, natural, natural mother. And I say that just I don't know in the in the most in the most natural way because I know that you feel that there's there's some people that they are just born old and wise and Mary was someone who was such a grounding presence in my life um, helping me to uh, transition into that phase of of womanhood and and becoming becoming uh, the person and the personality um, that I was going to be. And she's always been sure of herself. That's always how she's projected into spaces, whether or not she felt so sure of herself. But you'll hear that still in this episode. Someone very sure, grounded, calm, mother of two. I really wanted to celebrate her um, as the new mother that she is and the journey that she's on with that in the most beautiful ways that it exists for her. So please enjoy this episode of Live Like an Acrobat with the legendary American rhythmic gymnast and dual Canadian citizen, (laughs) Mary Sanders. Hi, lovely Mary. I'm so happy you're on the podcast. How are you today? I am good. Thanks, Shanae. Thanks for having me. So good to reconnect. (laughs) Of course. I miss you. (laughs) Miss you too. This is just crazy these times, but who knows if we would have even had a chance to reconnect if it weren't for this pandemic. So I'm grateful for that. I know. I'm so grateful for that too. Above above everything, even though it's like been so hard and everything, like this is just like one of the highlights of like speaking to like some of the people that I just like love so much and that I miss and that, you know, I've also too like have had so much like life experience with too. So this is mm-hmm. like a really like special episode <laughs> for <laughs> me because... <laughs> You're my, you're my original bestie. <laughs> yeah, I know. How many tours did we do together? And we lived together basically throughout that time. <laughs> I know, I know. We did, we did, we did two Olympic tours together. I mean, like who can say that they have that like shared experience with? I mean, that's like so, so, so powerful. And mm-hmm. um, like I was, um, I was speaking to another guest that I had on the show. Her name is Shannon McKenna. And I was speaking to her about you on her episode. And I was telling oh. her how amazing you were. And Aww. like, yeah, you came up in our conversation when I was when I was interviewing her on the podcast. And she was, we ended up like randomly talking about Shark Tank. And then we ended up talking about Robert Hirschbeck. And mm-hmm. I'm telling you the way that it came up in the conversation. And I pieced it together like I I I I butchered it. So please, you know, forgive me. I was I, I was trying to piece it together for her about what you do and who you are. And yeah. With respect to that. And anyway, and I was like I was like I was like, oh my God. I was like, first off, because Shannon has her podcast, The Artist Athlete, and I was like, you need to have Mary on. I was like, Mary Sanders is incredible. She's amazing. She does all these different Aww. things. And and Thank and then you. I was like, well, why am why haven't I had her on? <laughs> <laughs> You're so sweet. The podcast, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah it's it's random. Um, that's right. We did two Olympic tours together. Um, it was incredible. Those are some of my very fondest cherished memories, some crazy fun times. And somehow we managed to do a show every night. So, um, (laughs) I always look back on those times really fondly and, uh, yeah, we shared a room. We just, yeah, did everything together. It was super fun. Um, 
And I don't know. Yeah. Currently now, um, you know, after those tours, I uh, went to Cirque du Soleil. Um, I toured with them for about 10 years um, and two of their shows, one North American tour and one uh, European tour. And since then, kind of got out of the entertainment world a bit. I know it's a bit random, but um, I started working for Robert Herjavec and uh, I've been with him almost seven years now. So I started out as his executive assistant. And of course, it's very much in the realm of entertainment, which is totally up my alley and everything we've sort of done in the past with our tours, Cirque du Soleil, kind of being in that environment. So that's how I started with him. And uh, I've recently been promoted to uh, a VP of entertainment and global partnerships. So I head up all of his entertainment and personal brand that relates to speaking engagements, Shark Tank, endorsements, and so forth. So it's been really fun, very, very fast paced uh, environment. But uh, it's definitely on my alley. So that's kind of how I ended up here. <laughs> wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Look where you are now. I mean, like, you know, you're an entity. To me, you're like the original, to tell listeners, Mary Sanders is the original. Well, first of all, you're like the coolest Olympic rhythmic gymnast out there. You're, you <laughs> oh, know, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know you, about that, but. <laughs> it's true. You made, you made everything cool. Um, and, you know. <laughs> You, you're like, you're the girlfriend of girlfriends also. Like oh. that's how, you know, I would, I would describe you. Like I would have never, I would never have survived, I think, um, <laughs> doing the tours <laughs> if it was not for you. <laughs> like M&Ms and Sprite, right? <laughs> yes. Yes, people. Yes. You can have that much fun. You can have that <laughs> much fun. <laughs> So funny. Day in and day out. I mean, you know, that was so epic. And you're so incredibly decorated. Like Mary is, is you're like the highest decorated, you know, rhythmic gymnast in the Western hemisphere. I mean, that's really, you know, you, you know, you broke so many different, you know, barriers and everything with who you were, you know, as, um, as, as an American rhythmic gymnast, you know, like I want, mm -hmm. if you missed the lead up to this episode, of course, everyone where I speak at length about Mary's career, but you're also the original to me, like the original definition of a, what I like to call a circuspreneur, because you've always been in everything like you just mm -hmm. and also to remind listeners like when Cirque du Soleil came to Mary I mean that's what they do with people like Mary they came to her to offer her <laughs> her Aww. position in Corteo um <laughs> fresh off of her um second Olympic tour um and you know like you know you were part of their original creation I actually just saw I don't know if you saw did you see they just did spotlight for for Corteo for Corteo on oh, on no. YouTube um, no, I didn't. Yeah, they yeah they just they just came out with it the other day. I saw it and I was like, I can't believe this. I was like, they're coming out with this. I was like, Mary's going to be on the podcast. I was like, that's huh. so yeah, just yeah, synchronistic. I was I was thinking about you and I was thinking about remember when I came to the show and I in, embarrassed you to death. Um, <laughs> <laughs> No, never, I was, never. I was so excited to see you, and they they asked me to be less excited to see you. I was just, yeah, I was very excited, and um, to see you in all of your corteo glory. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, it's um, it's been a journey. Yeah, I mean, after our second Olympic tour, I was supposed to go to university. You know, I was accepted to Western University here in Toronto. Um, I mean, general arts, like I had no idea what I wanted to do. <laughs> um, then, then I was, uh, yeah, Cirque du Soleil came to um, one of our shows and we did a lot of stuff in those shows, right, Shanae? We did a lot of outside the box performances and, and so I think they saw that and yeah, they offered me a contract on Corteo funny enough in trampoline, but my father was uh, a big 10 champion and a very well-known American uh, trampolinist before he passed away when I was younger. So it sort of felt really full circle and like it would be a total fit. So absolutely accepted that contract, ran away to the circus instead of going to school, <laughs> which was <laughs> awesome. And uh, yeah, I learned a lot. I learned a lot on Corteo. Um, Trampoline wasn't a great fit for me. Being a rhythmic gymnast, super flexible, not a lot of strength. I mean, my ankles couldn't really hold up on the trampoline 10 shows a week. So eventually I switched to a Delirium, which is a European tour. And I had a solo act doing more rhythmic and contortion and aerial. 
way more up my alley. <laughs> so I really, yeah, I enjoyed that. Um, I will note, um, yes, in my day, I, I guess I did earn uh, some the title of best uh, Western Hemisphere. Um, since then, Laura Zhang actually has, uh, um, uh, you know, overachieved uh, and uh, has placed higher in, in the world uh, competition and at the Olympics. So I want to give that credit to her. But uh, yeah, back in my day, thank you, Sinead, for mentioning that. Definitely, uh, you know, achieved some some strides. I think that the U.S. Rhythmic uh, Committee and was looking to do. So I was happy to, uh, to do that as well. So, yeah. Oh, you're so amazing. Well, and you're also, which we were able to get this honor together. You were inducted into the USA Gymnastics Hall of Fame. Um, and I, I still can't believe too, that we were, well, first that I was inducted, but that we were inducted together. I mean, because doing the Olympic tours and then also both of us going in and working for Cirque du Soleil and, uh, and joining circus just as circus performers too, and being independent workers and and coming Mm -hmm. back and having that come full circle. That was a really powerful moment. Um, being inducted, um, after all of those years, um, Mm -hmm. together, um, you know, for those accomplishments and those achievements, again, like I said, yes, I love that you're giving, um, <laughs> the shout out uh, to the other lovely now new Laura Zang. Laura Zang. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But you're you're to me. <laughs> you will continue to be, and also Mary. You're you, Mary is also dual dual citizen. You're Canadian. Right. You're also. You're also American, so you have the best of both. Um, mm-hmm. So you and you stand, uh, you stand for both, which is also really amazing um, and uh, and also very unique. Um, you know, there's so many things I think about your career that were super unique, and you know, like what you did and what you paved the way. Um, you know, for for rhythmic gymnasts. Um, you oh. know, like were you? I mean, how many rhythmic gymnasts have been inducted into USA Gymnastics Hall of Fame? Like when you were inducted or by the time you'd been inducted yeah. I mean I think it's hard to say like same with you like in, for acro like not many right um yeah and we I think that there. is just incredible that we came full circle all those years later did a few uh shows in um with the Cirque du Soleil some uh, one-offs there together and then we came and got inducted in the hall of fame I mean just total full circle um so I yeah I think you know it's you know, rhythmic gymnastics and, you know, as well as acro, um, you know, not as many of us, I would say, get inducted in the Hall of Fame. There's been a select few, definitely so many more since us, I think, our generation, you yeah. know, the sport's getting a lot more recognition. And I think, you know, in your career, you know, with Arthur, like they, no one even heard of Sorry, is it sports acro or acro? I know they always change the term. They, they change the name like every single year. So you can call yeah. it whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I hadn't heard of it. No one had. You guys were three-time world champions. Like, it was just ridiculous to see what you guys could do. Like, no, And then, that, and then I mean, in if you, if you went to any Cirque du Soleil show, it was like seeing you and Arthur all over the place because it was just so incredible to watch. Like, one man throwing you during two flips in the air, like it was nuts. So, um, yeah, I mean, just, I think it's great that you guys brought that, that recognition to your sport. Um, I think in our era, it was such a special time because I think maybe I broke barriers, you guys did, and we kind of paved the way, uh, for others in our sport. So I think yeah. we have that in common as well. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, you know, and we were we were only two time world champion. I do have to say that, but thank I thought you. Thought it was three. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it would have been three, but you know, actually, and this is what I want to talk to you about uh, talk to you about as well. We did not get to go to Worlds um, in 2003 because of the Iraq War. So we would have been three times. Yeah, I remember we would have been, it's kind of like what happened this year with the pandemic, how people missed out on the Olympics. And I say that just because acrobatic gymnastics is not in the Olympics. So our well, Olympics... As it should be. <laughs> uh, you know, we are... <laughs> the, the, the struggle continues around that. You know, I, I one day, you know, every, every cycle they think that acro is going to get there and um i i i hope i hope to i i have to actually say this now i hope to see it in my lifetime and that's not really even far-fetched because i know you know decades kind of keep on going and 
I even imagined all these years now, after what we've done, I expected Acro to be closer to the Olympics by now. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, when I speak to the younger community and everything, and they tell me about it, and they're, I'm just like, so surprised, because, you know, I tell them, like, you guys talk about Acro the way that we were speaking about it, you know, 20 years ago. And that's, you know, like, we should be and, and Acro so much bigger now. And so, you know, so much more mainstream and just kind of, you know, like, like you're saying, it's, it's really everywhere. And I, I try to also to remind people on the podcast, if they don't know that, you know, like some of your best, you know, most prominent Cirque du Soleil performers have a, have a history in acrobatic gymnastics and have a history in rhythmic gymnastics and have a history in, in our disciplines. And a lot of people don't realize that, you know, they don't realize that. And for anyone out there, that's not super familiar again with rhythmic gymnastics they are the incredibly beautifully flexible gymnasts that use the ball apparatus the ribbon apparatus the hoop is there is there (laughs) there you're you're my favorite discipline actually Oh yeah, you're my favorite discipline, and 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 that's the truth. I always tell people that too, rhythmic, and because of like, even though I'm 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 like super small, but people always thought that I did rhythmic, and I always thought that that was really <laughs> that was really special. I'm like, no, I I'm the acro one. <laughs> you totally could have done rhythmic. Um, you know, and I I saw like there's so many sports like rock climbing's in the Olympics, like. <laughs> What? Breaking like, I'm so feet. happy for that, but how is Acro not? <laughs> Breakdancing is now going to be an Olympic sport. Um, Are you, you know, serious? Breakdancing? Yeah. Break dancing is now going to be an Olympic sport, and so is um, and so is uh, and you know pole dance is making their debut at this Olympics, and then they're soon going to be in, like in, inducted, you know, introduced to the Olympics like shortly after. That's that's the plan. So I know it's crazy. It's like every time it comes up, people like you know I get messages like this is happening before acro. And I'm like, I know, but I wanted to ask you about that too. Like this entire year that, and can you imagine that if you would not have been able to go to the Olympics when you went, because I mean, you know, like you, you were, you know, you were the Olympian, the rhythmic Olympian, Mary. I mean, like, what if you were not able to go like that year? I swear I have nightmares about this. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was talking to my mom the other day. Like, I peaked at the right time. I went to the Olympics when I should have gone to the Olympics. I mean, if I was in the unfortunate position that many of these athletes are right now, I don't think I would have qualified a year later. I don't think my body would have held up or I don't know if mentally I could have with, withstood another year of training you know it's so mentally draining on athletes the the lead up to the games the lead up to the big big match or competition um I I honestly like I am so grateful and I count my blessings every day that uh, my Olympics weren't postponed and like you your worlds you couldn't go and there's you know it's so beyond our control all this when you really look at it and I I am super grateful every day um because if I didn't go to the Olympics, I wouldn't be where I am today. I don't think so. So, yeah, my God, I my heart goes out. I feel for these athletes. I just, I think it's going to be an extra special Olympics, though. And, um, you know, I speak to those other sports that have been uh, added. And, I mean, breakdancing, it is super hard. <laughs> Good for them. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be an extra special Olympics. These athletes deserve so much credit. Yeah. Yeah. Like you're saying from making it, um, another year. And, you know, I've seen that even in, um, you know, speaking to you saying, I don't know if my body would have held up. I saw, um, I've been watching figure skating recently and there was, Mm -hmm. um, one of the, one of the top figure skaters actually, she had a big growth spurt because of COVID and she's like, um, they're trying to salvage her career and she's, you know, amazing. She's, you know, incredible. And she's like lost her jumps and they're trying to like re-update her technique. And I remember when I had a very tiny growth spurt, it was the biggest one I had because, as listeners should know, Mary is incredibly tall and statuesque, <laughs> and I am very, very teeny tiny. Like very, you You're know, so very, tiny. I'm very, very tiny, and I peaked at five. It's a widow, Shanae. It's a widow. Just so little. <laughs> I come up to Mary's waist, and um, 
I'm only like not even five seven. But uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, for yeah. for the Afro people, you guys, like in rhythmic, are our goddesses. Yeah. You are our yes, our our elongated goddesses. So yes, you are. <laughs> yeah. So I, you know, when I had my tiny one back then, it was it was so hard too. It was like, and she had a very intense growth spurt because I mean, obviously, I didn't take off months or you know didn't go to the gym for months. I didn't even take off, and I had the growth spurt. So you know, just seeing like all of that happen, yeah, I really feel mm-hmm. it makes me grateful for anybody that did make it through this time. But I shudder too, and I go back to 2003 because they told us a couple of days before we were flying to Worlds that we were no longer going, and right. like oh. I didn't, I didn't even imagine that we would make it to 2004, like. I never would have imagined, but yeah, I think it's going to be special. Um, you know, I can't wait to see, you know, everything coming together. And, you know, speaking of Olympic tours back to that, because you not only like performed and, you know, were celebrated, um, you know, as a decorated Olympian on our Olympic tours, um, reminding listeners, I am not an Olympian, um, but I was included on the Olympic tours with the Olympians. I was, I was, I was honored to be able to, to have that privilege to be able to do that. But Mary, you also choreographed Olympic tours. Mm -hmm. You, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you creatively directed different tours. The, The most popular Olympic tours actually um you were a part of in so many different instrumental ways like how is that for you and like are you planning on doing another olympic tour and then i want to talk about your new movie that's coming out that is Mm -hmm. that is pre um uh you know pre-premiering uh for this like olympic year too but first like on the tours because you Mm -hmm. had a lot of history with doing these tours too Mm -hmm. even post our tours together yeah yeah so i think you know, in our day, in our two tours, what was it, 2003, 2004, um, you know, we, we did a lot for our sport, but we also went outside the box a little bit, did some dance and this and that. And it was nice for, you know, people in the audience to see us outside of our sport and our element. No, you're not an Olympian, but in my eyes, you are, Shanae. Um, Absolutely. If anyone deserves that, you know, you're top of your sport. Like, you paved the way. Like, you deserve all the credit. Um, and, and yeah, so basically after the 2004, I went to Cirque du Soleil, did lots of different disciplines, trampoline, aerial contortion, like, you know, you really get exposed to different, different, uh, you know, circus arts and it's incredible. Um, I didn't do the 2008 tour, um, but I did get hired to do the 2012 and 2016 post, uh, Olympic gymnastics tours. I was a co-creative director with uh, John McCready, who has been on these tours since 1996. So <laughs> he had so much experience, you know, and he was the funniest, talented, <laughs> MC, person, friend, just an incredible human being. Um, so, you know, to co-create these tours with someone like that, I mean, we were yin and yang. Like, John brought so much for music and he had a lot of work with Red Foo at the time and um so he just he brought so many elements that weren't my strengths so then I brought a lot of the circus and more choreography and, and you know art- artistry to it so totally a great fit uh you know 2012 and 2016 post olympic tours were the most successful in history in terms of um you know revenue and audience um how many people were in the audience so Oh, just, just, uh, you you know how it is, those tourists, just an incredible vibe, incredible group of people every night coming together to put on your best show for these amazing audience members who pay to be there. You want to inspire young gymnasts who are there. And honestly, from just like listening to music, choreographing in my head to just seeing it all come to light every night, it's the most rewarding, incredible experience, I think, all in my life. So I I really, you know, I I love my job of working in entertainment day to day, but, you know, creating productions and, you know, you know, remembering where those visions come from in your living room or in the middle of the night, you wake up with a vision and then then seeing it really come to light. It's just the most incredible feeling. So I love those gymnastics tours. Um, uh, Not currently doing one this year, Um, you know, with COVID and everything. It's really put a wrench in that. I hope one day to be able to do it again. I won't be performing anymore. I've uh, hung up my aerial 
equipment for good. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, you know, I have two kids now, so I and I just don't practice every day. And I think it's a skill that should be for people who uh, really train hard and are totally focused. You know, it's dangerous. So, yeah, but I, I absolutely love choreography. I love um, artistic directing and uh, producing these tours and shows. And uh, yes, I've sort of translated all those skills into TV and film now. So um, that's really exciting. Please enjoy this short interlude. Check out my new vlog series, Think Like an Acrobat, which is available exclusively on Circus Talk as a pro series. It's offering pro tips to professionals within the circus arts industry. The latest episode of Think Like an Acrobat is Let's Work for Ourselves. How to be financially savvy with stage manager and broke girl rich financial blogger, Melissa Bondar. Learn the pathway to achieve financial literacy and financial stability as a working creative. Melissa's approach is enlightening and confidence inducing. And now, back to my conversation with the founder of Shine Alternative Fitness and a financial guru himself, Dima Shine. Just talk about emergency funds for a second. I think they're literally the most powerful tool that any of us have. I think for us, it also gives you this extra layer of freedom to be able to pursue some career opportunities that can really push your career much further if you have this little cushion that you can pull out occasionally or to be able to float yourself for a month or two to go do a volunteer one or like a really useful one. Join the Live Like an Acrobat podcast on Patreon. Become a patron. Enjoy early episode releases of the Live Like an Acrobat podcast and stay tuned for more exclusive content to come in the future as the community grows. Help me, your host, Shanae Stiletto, to keep bringing you the creatively innovative episodes that you've grown to love by signing up at www.patreon.com slash live like an acrobat podcast. I hope to see you on Patreon and thank you so much for your support of the podcast. It's my intention that the Live Like an Acrobat podcast will make a lasting positive impact on the circus arts world, performing arts world, creative entrepreneurship world, and acrobatic gymnastics competitive world at large. There is a call for an acrobatic teaching artist by Circus Harmony located in St. Louis, Missouri. Circus Harmony is seeking a full-time acrobatic teaching artist. Circus Harmony is primarily a social circus, but also offers recreational and pre-professional training. Acrobatics Coach is a key member of their teaching artist team since they believe acrobatics to be the primary core skill for all circus arts. They are seeking a reliable and adaptable individual who is highly knowledgeable about acrobatic technique and able to work independently and in a team. They need to be calm and creative with a good sense of humor to appreciate and survive the daily challenges of supporting a social circus that serves young people with a range of ages, abilities, and backgrounds. They must be a person of good character whose values align with Circus Harmony Code of Conduct. Candidate must be interested in serving as a role model and mentor as well as a technical coach. And they will need to be willing to relocate to St. Louis. The position is full-time, reports to artistic slash executive director, it's 40 hours a week, salary is commensurate with experience, the responsibilities include teaching and choreographing beginner to advanced solo and partner acrobatics and mentoring, education, experience and skills, seven plus years of experience in circus teaching and performing, high skill level in teaching solo and partner acrobatics, they prefer someone who can also teach Chinese pole and hoop diving, and they have knowledge of other circus genres. Competencies include great organizational skills, tremendous communication skills, both in person, writing, and electronic, ability to prioritize and multitask under pressure, willingness to work a flexible schedule and be both independent and a team player, understanding that they are teaching more than just circus arts. They must demonstrate integrity and good judgment, common sense, and a sense of humor. Advantages of the position include training space, opportunity to perform, and working with a diverse group of children and adults working to make the world a better place. Reliable transportation is required. To learn more about the company at 
www.circusharmony.org and on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Circus Harmony. If interested, please contact Jessica Hintoff at circusday at circusharmony.org with a resume and cover letter stating why you are the right person for this job and a list of three references with at least one being a circus-related reference. Links to videos of your choreographic or performance work is appreciated. And now, back to my conversation with the legendary Mary Sanders. Like you mentioned, I, uh, since those tours, I have really dabbled in TV and film. I've learned a lot um, in my current job, and I've done a lot of sort of side passion projects. Uh, my most recent one is a movie that I am starring in as well as executive producing, along with Brain Power Studios here in Toronto. They do a lot, a lot of feel-good family shows, um, a lot of those Christmas movies you see on Netflix and so forth. So really good, um, family-friendly, um, all-age-appropriate movies they do. And so I met with them last year, and they'd had a, a gymnastics script kind of in the background for a while. And um, I said, oh, you know, I'll throw it my way. I'll have a look. So I did, long story short, made some changes to it. We produced it, we casted it, and we just wrapped filming last week. So it was super exciting. Um, you know, had to learn all my lines. <laughs> Definitely uh, outside of my element. You know, we're, Shane, you know, you know how it is. We're used to like physically being in front of the camera, moving with our bodies and telling a story, but to use your voice and act and talk, it's a completely different uh, ballgame. So, I learned a lot there. Um, I hope it's, it's, uh, I didn't totally embarrass myself, but <laughs> it's uh, the working title right now is Future Olympians. That might change a little bit, but it's going to be released prior to uh, the Olympics this year. So we have some great cast in it. We have Nastia Lukin and Chelsea Memel, who is making a comeback, hopefully, for these Olympics. So it's a pretty star studded cast, uh, along with some really up and coming superstar gymnasts who actually act. So I am so excited to uh, see this movie come to life. It's really a by gymnast for gymnast movie. So it's, it's super cute. Oh my gosh. That's so amazing. Like <laughs> you're starring in a movie. I mean, and I just love Nastia. I love, yeah, I know, right? oh my gosh. And Sweetheart. Chelsea, I've been watching her comeback on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Her, her comeback. I mean, what, what, what number Olympics would this be for Chelsea if she makes it? <sighs> I think the second. So she went to the 2008 Olympics. Wow. She's a 2005 world champion, 2008 Olympian, and um, she's had two kids. She's a mom, a coach, and she's making a comeback. Like, it's an incredible story. So, you know, when when I was talking with Brain Power Studios, I said, you know, two people I absolutely want in this movie that I think will really – contribute a lot um, and motivate gymnasts today, you know, because I think gymnastics needs some happiness and uplifting, um, you know, material like this. Uh, it's Nastia, you know, she's got such a presence. She has her own competition, little gymnasts look up to her already. And she's just an amazing person and friend. So I wanted her involved. And Chelsea, when I saw her comeback, I mean, there's lots of people making comebacks, but I just have this personal connection with Chelsea, as you do as well. Um, and I know her as a person. It's just a really genuine, amazing soul. So, uh, yeah, I think her um, comeback story is just really motivational that no one can tell you when you're done. You know, you're never done in life. You can always come back. And and recreate yourself. <laughs> oh, that's so important. Yeah, I just watched the Luke and Cup. Um, yeah, just the other week. Oh and yeah, 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 yeah. I was just watching it, and yeah, you know how much I just I love I love everyone. I love Nastia. I love Chelsea. I mean, again, just for listeners, you know, we all go way back. You know, Nastia Lukin is so incredibly decorated. If mm -hmm. you don't know her, if you don't know that name, but I think if you're listening to this podcast, you probably know who Nastia Lukin is. But if you don't, please look her up. But we've known her since she was a very little girl, and she is mm -hmm. the she is the would be rhythmic gymnast who became an artistic Olympic 
Olympic champion. Um, right. <laughs> right. Which is very hard to do. <laughs> it's not impossible. <laughs> she's this, she's this, this super blended hybrid, but I mean, but you guys also to share that because you had those artistic and trampoline influences too. So there is, mm -hmm. there is that, that you guys share as well. That's, that's again, like very special. So all those things are yeah. just very special to me because we know the dynamics and things that it takes to be able to do each and every one of those disciplines. And so I just love seeing who ended up where and how and like what influences they had. Um, but I mean, you just have such amazing amazing figures in this movie and mm -hmm. I mean I would just love to hear even a little bit more about like you know like how did you guys shoot especially like during yeah. COVID like how mm -hmm. was that done especially because I mean you know like what is the what is the rest of the gist of the movie like that we can expect from it or you know like in terms of you know storyline or yeah how does how yeah. it all like comes together Absolutely. So um, it's about uh, sisters who, you know, are training together, living together. It's a little bit based on my life. You know, their mother passed away. You know, my father passed away at a young age. And, you know, they have a single father who's trying to give their daughters their all and, uh, you know, be supportive of both of them evenly in their gymnastics career. And, you know, at one point that one of them switches to another team and there's this like, you know, um, drive back and forth, some awkwardness because they're on different teams now. And it's just a story of all these gymnasts coming together for a mutual goal. Uh, no matter what team you're on, you have to still be supportive of each other. And we see that a lot in artistic gymnastics, other teams cheering on other girls, even when they're against each other or all vying for that gold, there's still that community and teamwork that has to happen. Um, yeah, teamwork makes the dream work is sort of our tagline there. <laughs> so yeah, it's a really, really um, motivational movie for I think a lot of gymnasts who are in their position. And uh, in terms of shooting with COVID, I mean, I am so grateful again that, you know, TV and film has been exempt from this quarantine or lockdown and uh, we've been able to continue production. So um we actually wrapped just in, in ahead of this stay at home order, but um, you know, we had testing every day on site. You like me, I was an executive producer. I wasn't even there for every day of filming because we had to limit the amount of people on set. So I had to sort of watch takes and this and that from afar. Um, so testing every day on site, you were secluded in your own room until it was time to shoot once it's time to shoot, you take your mask off, say your lines, put your mask back on, go back to your room, your holding period. So, yeah, it's a um, very, very different way to shoot. Um, but we were able to do it uh, safely and uh, with full on COVID protocols and testing in place. And it's a whole other added part to it. But um you know, grateful we got it done and safely for all the cast, especially the young gymnasts we had shooting. So they were all so good about everything. So yeah, it's, I can't wait till it's over, <laughs> but it was really challenging. It's a beautiful storyline. And I think like I mentioned again, I think we all know that gymnastics needs uh, some positivity and some happiness right now. And this movie is absolutely that. Yeah, I mean, it really does. I'm so grateful for you. And again, for for people like you that have been around for so long um, and that have been instrumental in continuing to lift up this environment too, like, you know, how important you are. I, I just always find it very important for those that have been that journey to come back and to be around and to be influential and to, mm -hmm. you know, like help the generations like moving forward. And I think, you know, especially with you, Mary, because you've stayed involved. I mean, you've judged as well um, over the mm -hmm. years um, and you've really, you know, maintained um, a beautiful presence like within the community and everything. And I think this is like a really big gift that you're giving. Um, to the whole, like, you know, the entire gymnastics community, because 
I mean, you always need inspiration because of how hard all of this is, how hard being a gymnast is, how hard it is doing rhythmic, how hard it is being a competitor. I mean, how it is like your entire life and it takes a village and how much it takes out of like your family and all the things that we all went through to be able to get what we've gotten to, you know, with you losing your dad. And I, it reminds me, you know, of when I lost my first coach, Nikolai, you know, to cancer yeah. and, um, you know, losing him, I almost like never continue to compete again and I thought that that was it and he was like the most important person in my life besides my mom and dad and um that was something that was so impactful to me so we know we understand loss um and in connection to something that we love and Mm -hmm. having that experience at such a young age and how that shapes you and that definitely shaped my journey um and I'm always very grateful that I had I mean, he gave me everything. I wouldn't have had my career if it weren't mm-hmm. for everything that he gave before he, he passed away from lung cancer. Right. And then it set the stage for everything after that, you know, that I ended up having. So for me, I always just tell everyone, like, my entire career, I owe it to him. And thank God, you know, his his wife is still here, Lori, and their daughter. And so, like, oh. he left you know, people that are still my family to this day that I'm super close to, you know, that like carry on his legacy. But it's so important to, I think also to reflect and share in stories and people's journeys and, and the human, the human side of who we all are, because, you know, a lot of times people just see us as these competitors and being strong and being fierce and making it through all these things. And they don't Mm -hmm. see like the behind the scenes of, of so many of our journeys and what it took to get there. And, you know, and the 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 difficult things that you have to overcome to get there, because we all know that every single person's journey to gold and to you know the Olympics or to worlds or to nationals or to anything is is made up of so many different um, challenging factors. You know, a multitude of different things that come up in someone's life um, that are specific to their journey. But this is this is really just inspiring. Like, I just love that, you know, you can, you, you just keep on adding to the list, Mary. That's what you, <laughs> you just keep adding to your, to your, to your resume, you know, like, yeah. I, <laughs> I don't know. I think it's funny. Like after I had my son, I was like, life's just going, like, what are we doing? We need to reach for the stars. I know it's cheesy, but like, <laughs> I just, uh, you know, I have a lot of goals and I, I'm trying my best to uh, just push forward regarding, you know, even though it's COVID and we, you know, I think having my kids, my daughter and my son, I just really want to leave them, you know, a legacy, I guess, of their mom um, and really just push for everything I can and then be my all for them and, and uh, have them look back on something, you know, um, my mom was even in this movie with me. She was one of the extras in the background. So if you see it, Sinead, you'll probably recognize my mom. So, you know, and, and just for me, even in 20 years, 30 years, 40, being able to look back and be like, oh my God, like that was my mom with me. And then my kids can watch the movie and you know, there's all our videos of sport, but it's just another element, right? So we have to keep reinventing ourselves, right? One life to live. Can't get boring. Oh my God. Your mom is in the movie. That is so yeah. special. <laughs> oh my God. What I did know. she do? She must have just been looking. She was at like you. cheering. She's like in the audience. And then when I, uh, I'm, I'm, I play the commentator in the movie. Oh. And uh, when I'm commentating, she's like standing right behind me <laughs> in some of the scenes. Yeah. Her baby, her baby, who is yeah. in her own movie, who has her own babies. Yeah. I, I mean, that is just like so, so wild. And uh, yeah, I wanted to talk to you too about that, about like, you know, about being a mom and, you know, mm-hmm. of course, like being a mom during the pandemic, being a new mommy, you have two small babies and, mm-hmm. you know, even just like, yeah, like taking that next step in your journey of course again because you know we work with our bodies and our whole life is our bodies and our relationship to our bodies and how much that changes everything in relationship to what you do with your career and you know if you continue to perform or if you continue to do other things and how Mm -hmm. that's like affected you know your life and how that's affected your career which I want to remind people you can obviously see that um motherhood just made Mary even more inspiring. It did not slow her down as sometimes people will say if they say, oh, they call <laughs> back. Mary obviously like leaned even more forward. 
<laughs> to everything you, you yeah you know you're giving the master class on what it means yeah, to, <laughs> to continue. yeah I, yeah I think you know uh, it's so hard being a woman and um I'm grateful that nowadays you know women are being seen as you know even playing fields men it's but the things we go through are next level like just being a teenager and then growing into a woman and then, you know, doing all the things we're supposed to do, get married, have kids. And, you know, I don't know. I, um, it was a huge, I'm very grateful for, um, you know, having my performance career, using my body to the max I possibly could. And then having that transition sort of into the corporate world when I did, um, I'm super grateful for that because it allowed me to, you know, marry my husband, have my two kids, um, I did uh, perform all the way up until then, um, but I did retire at the time I was supposed to prior to having my kids. So, um, like, I can't even imagine right now trying to get on like a silk, aerial silk. <laughs> um, I think, you know, I'm really grateful for the transitions and when I did them and uh, super, it was definitely the right time to have my kids. Um, but in terms of being the working mom, you know, I, I always knew I didn't just want to stay at home with my kids. Granted the women who do, I mean, my hat is off because man, it is so hard to be a full-time mom, stay at home mom. Like that is the hardest job in the world. It is the hardest job I've ever had. Um, so that is, yeah, it's the hardest job. Um, but I'm very grateful that during my time having my kids, I've been able to advance my career which has been extremely hard, right, to um, be seen as a mother as, and as well as a businesswoman. So I've really tried to uh, portray that it is possible. It absolutely is. You just have to believe in yourself. You need to prioritize your time. Um, you know, as moms, we don't sleep anyway. So <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, I think it's really important that, you know, mothers can do everything. They can be, they can have a career. They can be a good mom. They can be a good wife. And that's sort of the, the the day and age we live in. You know, we're not seen as one or the other. And so I really, yes, tried to uh, do everything. And, of course, my kids come first. Uh, but I really, I have been trying to push forward. And I think being a mom and having that experience has helped me grow as a person. And it's given me more confidence as to who I am and what I want and what to prioritize, spend time on or not, right? We kind of... As you get older, especially if you have kids, if you don't have kids, I think just as you get over, older, you really understand who you are and who's worth your time and what is worth your time and uh, and so forth. So very grateful for everything, all my experiences. My husband's really been a rock for me. And um, yeah, I feel I feel excited. You know, I love my 30s. <laughs> <laughs> I love my 30s more than my 20s. I guess I could say that. <laughs> Agreed. I absolutely agreed. Um, you are just um, a magnificent uh, human being, a magnificent woman, a magnificent mother. And I want people to know that you've always had your priorities straight. Um, you are really the original grounded um, person that I've ever known. Oh, and um, so sweet. I can even say that knowing each other since we were kids because you have mm -hmm. always known who you are and you've always been clear about the direction that you're going in and you've never seen yourself as having to be something other than what you want to be that's at least how you've always reflected back to me and I think that anybody that's come in contact with you would say the same thing because you've mm -hmm. always been very radiant and You've always been incredibly sure of yourself. And I just love that you've always just gone and done whatever you wanted to do. And before it was like the thing to do, you, you did that. Like, look at all the different oh, so things. It's true though. I mean, you know, you were, you were pretty much, you know, like fresh out of the gate, but you've always, um, you've always had a, a wisdom to you ever since we were very young. And, you know, I know that I, you know, joke about, you know, what you meant to me when we were, you know, little and, and young and going through those experiences, and, you know, coming off of like our careers and retiring and, you know, after all of that, and that was such a profound transition for, for all of us in our lives mm -hmm. going into the next stages of our careers. And I'm really grateful that I made that transition 
with you. And I'm grateful for everything that you put out in the world all of these years. Because like I said, look at all the things that you've um, that you've created for yourself. And you've never seen yourself as something less than being incredibly dynamic. And you're a dynamic personality. You are the original savvy person, the original Aww. savvy woman. And I you're know, so sweet. well, the, the community is very fortunate to have you. And, um, and I see that and they know that and they acknowledge that about you and um, the way that you mentor and the way that you stay um, in rhythmic and in the community. And then also to bringing all the knowledge that you've learned by expanding into so many other different mediums. And you bring that back into that environment, which needs so much because we need you know we need the presence of people that are as good as you are to be in these environments that are so important to all of us because they were our lives and like you know created our lives basically that's where we got so much of who we are from so I'm just incredibly grateful that you continue to like be who you are because I wouldn't have imagined you not being anything less than just spectacular from being Aww. young because you've always been really spectacular and thank you so much for coming on to the show Mary and I just love you and I'm grateful for you and I was so happy to speak to you and I'm so excited to see the movie and to see oh. you in it and to see your mom I hope I don't suck but uh, <laughs> I uh this was amazing Shanae and um you are the same person you always were, bubbly, positive, just a light in this world. And um, we need more of you as well. And um, I hope this is uh, just the start of more conversations we can have like this. I think it's really important in our day and age. We come together and, and you know, you brighten my day, you know, just hearing your voice. So, and I think everything you do in, in the circus community and, and just you as a person. Uh, anyone you surround yourself with is lucky to be around you. So I, uh, I really appreciate you inviting me to be on today. Thank you, love. Thank you so much. I hope that you enjoyed my loving conversation with the legendary Mary Sanders on this Mother's Day celebration, this celebration of mothers in this episode, <laughs> no matter what day you're listening to it on. <laughs> And I wanted to share the background of Mother's Day or the original background of Mother's Day, which is, I think, incredibly significant. And when I discovered it, it made so much difference uh, in my perspective of how we see mothers in the world and what mothering means. And especially with my conversation with Mary Sanders and speaking about women's rights and a woman's place in this world. And the original Mother's Day was born of the Mother's Day proclamation, the appeal to womanhood throughout the world by Julia Ward Howe. And it was an appeal for women to unite for peace in the world. It was written in 1870 and Howe's appeal to womanhood was a pacifist reaction to the carnage of the American Civil War and the Franco-Prussian War. The appeal was tied to Howe's feminist conviction that women had a responsibility to shape their societies at the political level. In 1872, Howe was asked for the celebration of a Mother's Day for Peace on June 2nd of every year, but she was unsuccessful. The modern Mother's Day was established by Anna Jarvis 36 years later. While the day she established was different in significance from what Howe had proposed, Anna Jarvis was reportedly inspired by her mother's work with Howe. I hope that you will take that to heart. Uh, if you did not know how Mother's Day became what it is today, I think it is such a significant backdrop because it was an appeal for mothers and for women to get together to end wars and to end uh, their sons uh, not surviving these wars, uh, which is very different from how we celebrate it today in today's culture. And actually, uh, the mother, or actually Anna Jarvis herself, became quite dismayed uh, of the fact that Mother's Day became what it became. She felt like it became commercialized and co-opted 
um, by florists and by uh, you know different companies seeking to make money off of the holiday, uh, and she felt that uh, she had strayed or that it had strayed from the initial ideal of what she had in mind as well. So I wanted to leave you with this powerful rendition or actual powerful original song by a Palestinian YouTuber, singer, performer. And she speaks in this song, which you will hear shortly, about Abe. And that is shame in the Palestinian cultures, in the Arabic cultures. And it's a word often used uh, extensively to, uh, to represent any activity that a woman or a girl is doing within the presence of their family or friends that they deem offensive or shameful. She is trying to uh, change her culture and change what it means to be a woman and to be independent and uh, to own your actions. And the song is really, it's, it's hilarious in its uh, sincerity. And um, I highly recommend that you uh, look it up. I will have it located in the show notes. And you will get to hear uh, how she is moving the needle forward um, within a culture that prides itself, unfortunately, in many ways on shaming the women with which it loves and gains so much from. So please enjoy this outro and thank you so much for tuning in and happy Mother's Day. بنوتل كتكوتا دايما بالكوتا سيبك من الفلسفة وركزي بالشكشوكة ابن خالك وابن عمك واخوكي صح انتي واختك واختك طبطة وعامل بيت رايحة على فين او عامل بيت لابسة كده ليه في الصالة لما اكون مع الفاميلي ويجون عنا الضيوف دي اي سبيك مي تو نظف The Live Like an Acrobat podcast is also available on Circus Talk the inclusive, independent and international online network for the circus industry Circus Talk's mission is to create a level playing field for this industry and democratize access to information. Please consider subscribing to the Live Like an Acrobat podcast and to the circuspreneurblog.com where you will find extended conversations and interactive content of each episode of the Live Like an Acrobat podcast. I'm your host, Shanae Stiletto, and until next time, please stay safe and stay healthy.